Your Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Croatia, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Honorable Minister of Interior, Honorable Members of the European and the Croatian Parliament and Government, Representatives of the Croatian and Allied Armed Forces, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ambassador Schulz, Mr. Prusina, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung to today's third International Security Conference organized again together with our partners from the Croatian Statehood Foundation. On this occasion, I'm particularly happy that we have been successful this time in inviting, among other dignitaries, two eminent foreign security policy experts from Germany to attend today's important international security conference. Allow me first to welcome and introduce to you the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament, Mr. David McAllister. Mr. McAllister has not only been a longtime member of our Christian Democratic Union Party, but also a former Minister President of the German Federal State of Lower Saxony. He is currently the Vice President of the European People's Party and Vice Chairman of the International Democrat Union. Mr. McAllister, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you. I trust in the name of all of us for your readiness to come all the way to Zagreb to share with us your views on the foreign and security policy challenges facing us in Europe today. I'm also very pleased to welcome among us retired Brigadier General Rainer Meyer zum Felde, who now looks back on a professional career in NATO and the German Armed Forces for a few years, both of us, were actively involved in helping the dialogue between the military and the civil society at the interface between security and foreign policy issues. Thank you, too, for being with us today. Gledajući Republiku Hrvatsku iz perspektive jedne političke zaklade, primetan je značajan napredak u odnosu na prošlu konferenciju. Hrvatska je dobila strategiju nacionalne sigurnosti, Donesena je odluka o kupnji višenamjenskih borbenih zrakoplova kao vjerovatno najznačajnije ulaganje u vojnu opremu hrvatske samostalnosti. I ne manje važno, hrvatska vlada na čelu s premijerom Plenkovićem uspješno i uporno radi na očuvanju političke stabilnosti i pravne sigurnosti, što su stupovi, rekao bih, nacionalne sigurnosti. We live in a world that seems to be changing even faster than some of the most renowned experts thought it would. This also applies to the challenges that go along with these changes. Sometimes it appears that diplomacy is increasingly in a constant crisis mode. There's crisis management all over the place. Syria, use of chemical weapons, Salisbury, JCPOA, Brexit and other issues. Security is not for free. It goes along with mutual solidarity. We, as Europeans, need to be even more realistic. We are responsible for ourselves, for our fate. If we want a rule-based international system, we need to work for it. We Prošle godine na početku mandata na ovoj konferenciji imali prigodu govoriti o našim strateškim ciljevima u području obrane i sigurnosti. Kazali smo da nam je cilj izraditi novu strategiju nacionalne sigurnosti i donijeti zakon o sustavu domovinske sigurnosti. Oba ta cilja su ostvarena. Mi smo u području obrane nakon šest godina pada i stagnacije povećali obrambeni proračun i to dvije godine za redom. Znamo da Hrvatska ima snažnu tradinciju obrambene vojske, pobjedničke vojske u domovinskom ratu i to nas obvezuje na temeljitu i promišljenu modernizaciju. Znamo da nam na taj način raste i vjerodostojnost kao pouzdanog partnera i saveznika, ali i kontributora u mirovnim operacijama Ujedinjenih naroda. To me dovodi do teme koja je jedan od dva naša ključna sljedeća koraka u našoj europskoj politici, a to je članstvo u Schengenu, odnosno šengenskom prostoru, naš politički, strateški cilj koji bitno mijenja značaj ulogu Hrvatske i u regiji, ali i u Europskoj uniji. Smatram da smo u proteklih skoro godinu i pol dana 
napravili izuzetne napore u ispunjavanju svih tehničkih uvjeta za članstvo. Surađujemo sa drugim članicama, razmjenjujemo podatke kroz šengenski informacijski sustav i s obzirom da Hrvatska ima jednu od najdužih granica, pripada nam važna i odgovorna uloga u zaštiti vanjske granice Europske unije, koja je ujedno i vanjska granica Hrvatske. Naša ambicija i cilj ostaje ispuniti sve potrebne uvjete, tehničke, organizacijske i zakonske, do kraja 2019. dakle u mandatu aktualne Junckerove komisije i smatram da ćemo to učiniti i dovesti Hrvatsku u poziciju da se politička odluka o članstvu u Šengenu otprilike dogodi u vrijeme uoči Hrvatskog predsjedanja Vijećem Europske unije, kao što znate, to je prva polovica 2020. Danas je Republika Hrvatska članica Europske unije koja postupno sve više ožitvoruje koncept zajedničke vanjske i sigurnosne politike, ali i obrane. Hrvatska svoju sigurnost vidi kao nedljeljivu od evropske sigurnosti i želi ju graditi pridonoseći tako jačanju unutarnje i ukupne sigurnosti Evropske unije. Republika Hrvatska je stoga snažno opredljena i za jačanje stabilnosti i sigurnosti na području jugoistočne Evrope i posebno u državama svojega jugoistočnog susjedstva. Želimo ostvarivati četiri jasno definirana nacionalna interesa. Prvi je sigurnost stanovništva te teritorijalni integritet i suverenitet Republike Hrvatske. Drugi je dobrobit, prosperitet građana, to jest ekonomija. Treći je nacionalni identitet, međunarodni ugled i utjecaj Republike Hrvatske. I četvrti, ne manje važan, ravnopravan položaj, suverenitet i opstanak hrvatskog naroda u Bosni i Hercegovini i položaj hrvatske nacionalne manjine u drugim državama. Both the EU's global strategy on foreign and security policy presented by the High Representative Federica Mogherini in 2016 and your strategy share a number of similarities. One example is the emphasis on the concept of human security, a new security paradigm entailing a shift in focus from the state as the referent object to individuals and citizens. In addition, both the European Union as well as our member state Croatia stress the importance of an integrity approach to conflicts, including building societal resilience, combating climate change, preventing conflict in its early stages, empowering women and strengthening human rights. But at the same time, and this is important to underline, Croatia and the EU are well aware that a truly holistic security approach also means that our efforts to build resilience must be based on credible, hard power capabilities. Hard power is key, and this is why NATO and the common security and defense policy of the EU are of utmost importance in order to ensure the security of our citizens and the EU's autonomy of action. I would like, I really like to support what the defense minister said. Our goal must be to promote greater defense cooperation within the EU in complementarity with NATO not in duplication, not in competition, and to create a solid and strong European defense industry. Ladies and gentlemen, recently important progress has taken place in terms of EU defense capabilities. Last year alone, we have launched a European defense fund. We have launched and established a military planning and conduct capability. Some call it headquarters, others not. And we have put in place a permanent structured cooperation, abbreviated PESCO, in security and defense matters. As many observers in Brussels stress, in the field of our common security and defense policy, presumably more has been achieved in the last 18 months 
than in 60 years before. Živimo kao što vidimo iz svih ovih izlaganja u prijelomnom vremenu u kojem svjedočimo raznim napadima na naš način života i naš sustav vrijednosti. I zato ne čudi što je upravo sigurnost ključno pitanje za ponovno pridobivanje povjerenja europskih građana značajno narušenog posljedicama migracijske krize i terorističkih napada u Evropi. Sigurnost je jedna od okosnica rasprave o budućnosti Europske unije, a kratkoročno ona će zasigurno biti jedan od važnijih kriterija za donošenje odluke o ukidanju ponovno uvedenih kontrola na unutarnjim granicama, a onda i za odluku o proširenju šengenskog prostora. The European Parliament and the European Council agree that we want to structure the future relations between the UK and the EU in a system with four pillars. The first one is a trade agreement. The second one is a cooperation agreement on external security, foreign affairs. The third pillar would be a cooperation agreement on internal security. And the fourth one would be other thematic issues like research, education, or just to name a few. But we should never forget the British remain our partners in G7, in G20, in the United Nations, and especially in NATO. And we in the European Union will have to bear in mind that the three most important NATO allies, the United States, the United Kingdom and Turkey, will all three not be members of the European Union. The aggressive behavior of Russia, which we considered so far throughout the 90s and uh, the early 2000 years as a partner, a strategic partner, uh, with that assertive behavior and aggressive behavior against the Ukraine has changed everything. That has greatly revitalized NATO as the alliance for collective defense. And since then we have had um, two major historic summits in Warsaw, uh, in September 2014, and then two years later in, in, in Wales, and then two years later in Warsaw, where we have completely adapted the Alliance strategic posture. With much more emphasis now again on deterrence and defense, combined with an offer to Moscow for dialogue. Yes, Russia is back unexpectedly, and it takes us, it has taken us as a strategic surprise in 2014, is back as a potential threat for those nations who are exposed. So we need to face again to do what is necessary to deter a regional conflict at the high intensity level against a peer state actor who, who starts in a hybrid mode but can ex escalate to really conventional warfare and even nuclear warfare. Uh, it was high time. Uh, we need more cooperation on defense and security in the fields of defense procurement, defense research, with regard to our joint operations. That's why I welcome the establishment of a joint military EU headquarter. And permanent structured cooperation is a major step forward. I'm first of all very happy that we managed to get 25 out of 27 member states on board. At the end, it's about giving <coughs> European Defence Corporation a structure. I would say one of the most important ones is, because we're just talking about Schengen in another context, what we definitely need is a better military mobility on the, in continental Europe. And this is something which NATO is very much interested in, but what EU can much better provide. So I think what you will see in the next months will be a hard work on increasing and improving military mobility within Europe.